gun sight on the top of it, if you, you can either look through the telescope or look over it and say, oh, he's over there. But you should have got the same spirit model as that on the back of it, so they, they can keep it up there. Just don't, don't hold it like that, you guarantee that where your hand is is where they will read it. It's not a problem when they're close like here, but if they're like where, nearly where Martin is, if it was relative to the top of Lovely. It's supposed to be a, like a cross between Worcester sauce and actually fish paste, isn't it? Like so if we can look at the landscape in great detail, we can start interpreting really the patches of where the woodland was, where the grass was what the river was like, whether there was a river there in the past. And all these things um, help us understand the landscape that we're now looking at. And perhaps the thing which you must never do is look at the landscape today and then transport it back into the past because it was very different, exceptionally different. And we know that since the last glaciers went away, the area was very cold, frost heaved and fractured the chalk and slowly the chalk moved down slope and there's porridge creating periglacial solid flexion material, this coombe rock, porridgey chalk at the bottom of the slope. So here we are on strips of denuded chalk, down at the bottom slope we might see chalk that moved down slope 10,000 years ago and then we have a baseline from which all archaeology starts. Um, first of all we air dry the soil so, it's a cons so we've got rid of most of the moisture. Because if I took this when it was raining, or I took it today when it was a uh, a very dry day, the soil will have a different weight. Once it's air dry, we then weigh it out, so I have a constant weight. Lots of snails further down. <laughs> 